Ferry Bridge Services. Sat slurping black coffee in the services, gone midnight. You almost kid yourself it's cinematic, as lorries fly by in the inside lane, blurring with the reflections from the seats by the window. Premier League highlights on the plasma in the corner probably would have been omitted from anything cinematic. Ferry bridge services, from the inside looking out. When, when you were younger, you and your mates could see this spot, watching down from the Warwick estate as analogue eyes sought mischief, dialing 999, reporting bombs, and then waiting for patrol cars to frantically soothe your boredom. So, if this is cinematic, I guess Shane Meadows might call the shots. Sing us some more Sink Estate sonnets before a lingering frame on your soya milk latte. Fiddling with your dockers, scowling at the boom mic, and silently rolling a cigarette as West Bromwich Albion celebrate in the background. That was my poem, Ferry Bridge Services, which is one of the selected poems in my debut collection, uh, Two Little Ducks. Um, so welcome to this week's Insta session. My name is Matt Abbott. I run the Nymphs and Fogs uh, spoken word record label. I've been doing these weekly Insta sessions uh, since the first week of May. Um, and I've really enjoyed it. It's been a real lifeline for me during the lockdown. It's such a relaxing experience for half an hour, uh, listening to some of my favourite poets, uh, chatting to them, finding out about the process and how they've been getting on during the lockdown. Um, and I've had some great feedback as well from, from you guys. So I'm really pleased that it's something that you all enjoy doing. Um, yeah, I've been lucky enough to invite poets from all over the UK. Uh, Joshua Dehan did it from Sweden last week. I've got some transatlantic poets in the pipeline. So yeah, absolutely buzzing. Uh, tonight is session number 16 and we welcome Louise Fazakali. Um, so Louise is a poet from the exotic northern streets of Orwell's Wigan. Uh, she joined Nymphs and Fugs in 2015 where she released uh, Council House Poetry which was two audiobooks, Love is a Battlefield and Bird Street. Um, and last week she published a new pamphlet called The Uniform Factory with Verve Poetry Press. She's one of my favourite people and one of my favourite poets. So I'm going to invite her to join the call now. Da, 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 if technology allows it. One of the easiest things you could possibly do on the internet, so I don't know why I say that, but here we go. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. The technology has worked. That's it. Easy as. Good. Hi. It's like the big... <laughs> Yo, you look amazing, as always. I've just... Done a lot of bright light behind the camera, everybody. If you want to know more about that, go on the YouTube's and Google how to be a dead good YouTuber, and it tells you all about it. <laughs> when when I started this, at the start of May, lighting wasn't a problem, and I've just panicked, like getting a lamp, getting that light, trying to coordinate it. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, I've got Seems my extension that. lead out. Everything's stacked up. <laughs> yeah, I say it's the easiest gig online, but there's a lot goes into this. But no, nah, it's all good. And thanks so much for giving up your time to to do it. Um, how are you feeling about the pamphlet? Oh, so relieved when it came through the post today. <laughs> I'm in like, oh, I want a physical copy, like, and there was a little bit of delays with the postage thing. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling good about it. Um, I've just been reading it and going, oh, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> There's some funny bits in. I forgot to put them in. <laughs> you find that you read it differently once you've actually got it in your hands, like knowing that other people are reading it as well. Um, oh, one of my daughters is just banging the front door shut. That's pleasant, isn't it? <laughs> How rude. Only half an hour on the internet. Uh, what are we talking about now? Do I find it differently when I'm reading it from the book? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, because um, you you don't have the same pauses when you, you would know it in your brain. And uh, maybe sometimes the emphasis is different. I don't know. Maybe I do. don't know. No, but I do like... Um... Even just reading it, like judging, like so, so say for example, when you publish a blog post, you always read it differently, knowing that it's live, than you do before you publish it. Do you know what I mean? Like suddenly, when it's in a book, you like see, oh, that bit's good, or I oh, noticed that bit. Or you, you almost like read it as a hunter, if that makes sense. Oh, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, because particularly when you've not seen it for a while. Um, yeah. Like, and then sometimes I just think, oh, this that line's not actually that good, so I'll just, I'll when I'm reading it for the public, I'll just. Add an extra bit in. <laughs> I think well, that's I'm, I'm, yeah, fair enough. Well, I'm looking forward to reading it. Like, and um, yeah, I, I'm really excited to see it because you've been working on like the concept, uh, like several concepts you've 
like overlapped over a few projects, haven't you? You've been developing it for a long time. It's really exciting to see. How yeah, it's so, so like um, the original work was developed as part of the Verb New Voices Award as Love is a Battlefield. So that was the first sort of like writing of that, but it felt very much like a first draft. Um, yeah. And then it, um, it grew and it got music underneath it and then it became part of Council House Poetry um, so that's exciting and then um, last year I went to do my Masters and uh, with the view to getting a lot of my uh, performance work ready for the page and um, so then it grew again and changed and more work was added and I discovered um, a form of poetry called Land Days um, so Land Days are two line poems um, that come from um, Afghanistan and um, Pashto people and the tradition is that women share them with each other and, you t and they're anonymous and you take a land day and you twist it um, so you oh. make it your own um, and a lot of the land days are about sex and war um, and about husbands going away to fight and because this pamphlet is about when my experiences with my ex went away as a soldier um, it felt something's really um, wrong true with the land days that the Afghani women were writing. Um, and I thought, no one knows about this poetry form, why not? Like, why is it hidden? Like, it's wrong. Mm. Um, so there's a really good article on the Poetry Foundation. If you if basically if you Google land days, um, I'll, I'll look on the Poetry Foundation. Um, a journalist did a, a really, a really great article um, talking to Afghani women about their experiences and how they're not allowed actually to share poetry. Um, in you know, and it's been it's been suppressed. Um, so I just thought yeah. it was really important to kind of just kind mm -hmm. of raise awareness. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds amazing. So that's and that's sort of incorporated in the uniform factory. Yeah. Um, so there's yeah. about four or five land days and you can hear the, you can read the originals um, in the article on the Poetry Foundation and then you can see mm. how I've begun to twist them, you know, to suit my setting. Um, mm. And I've recently got in touch with a young um, poet who was from Afghanistan and we're going to be doing some work together. So that's quite exciting. Um, oh, wow. You know, just basically to broaden, uh, to turn the pamphlet into a bigger project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, oh, poetry is powerful, isn't it? Like it really is. Like it's amazing what that just that connection that you've already made and seeing where that'll go. Like, cool. Yeah, um, what do you fancy? Oh, sorry, I wasn't thinking about that when I was writing it as such. You know, like you just yeah. think about your own personal experience, really. But then it's it's like, where does it touch the rest of the world? Where does it touch other people? Um, yeah. What else am I gonna say? And, and, and just because I've been doing more with visual artists, I've been thinking about how, like, um, we could have sculpture and installation and, um, and like, um, some of the performances and um, part of the profits are going to Amnesty International. So that feels like doing something, like, quite productive with some of the performances. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, do you fancy sharing something from that or, like, an old something old or whatever you fancy? Well, really? I think... That because we've been talking about it now, I feel like I have to go straight in with that. So uh, here it oh, is from today. Uh, the artwork's by Jim Winters, um, who's a, um, an American artist who I found online and I really liked his work. He was very generous when it came to me buying the artwork about how I could use it and stuff. So, so this is the cover of um, the Uniform Factory, but it's also in red. The cover part of the cover of Council House Poetry in it with Numbs and Fugs. Yeah. Some of the poems yeah. in this are on that um, album, uh, so that's good. Okay, where is I going to start? I wanted to start with a poem about school because I think a lot of working class um, men and women go in the army because of economic conscription and I hated school and often would not attend um, so I think school's a factory so this is what I wrote it's called factory staple shaped bucket shaped table shaped they try to fill us well well on well shoulder pads in blazers like polypropylene dimples stacked we are lined paper screamed at matchbox 
cheer on two legs middle finger both hands everyone knows they look like prisons they shut us down they shut us they all that's left is this sir thanks <laughs> so that's Beautiful. factory can i can i do another one now what's the yeah, now? talking between or what Whatever you want to do, honestly, just just however it feels natural. I won't interrupt you. Yeah, I wanna, cause like I just got like four really short poems from this. So can I do them and then we will do some more talking? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this next one's called Uniform. So it's going on from my, you know, school kind of uh, vibe. And, and I was just playing around with the word soldier and soldier. You know, like when you soldier stuff. Um, so it's just a, it's just a play on words. This really, and I don't think I've read it aloud. So, um, and I keep touching my phone because I want the light to be on. So, um, <laughs> uniform, soldier, hoodie, soldier, no mark, soldier, hood, winked, soldier, no chance, soldier, no brand, soldier, trackies, soldier, just do it, sport, soldier. No chance. Soldier trainers, soldier train me. Soldier trainee, soldier. No chance. Thanks. <laughs> this is the bit where I imagine the audience going wild and um, and, and you are the audience, Matt, and then like everyone on it. Oh, look, there's Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. Um, Okay, so um, the, uh, this next one I'll read you is the first piece in the um, pamphlet. And I did it from, I went to Arden, I got like, I won it, it's free. Arden's like, we well, can go and do a writing course, it's quite nice. Um, and I went to Arden and they did an exercise where they said photo and they showed us like some really good poems that did that. So I picked a photo which showed um, Daniel, who's like the father of the girls, when he had his passing out parade. So after you'd done your basic training in the art net, you'd have your passing out parade. So it was a photo from that and it had all his family on and his girlfriend at the time. And I wrote this bit a little poem. Um, so it's called um, Passing Out Parade 1998. If this were a wedding picture, you'd be marrying your dad. Centre stage, his her, like a yard brush, his tash, like a prison officer's. Chief bridesmaid, your poor mum, the awkward angles of her crap. I'm back now. I'm back. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Can you hear me? The last thing I heard was awkward angles. Okay. We'll go a little bit. Sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I don't know what happened. Then it just went off. I need plugged in. Anyway, whatever. Okay. So we're back in the picture, aren't we? We've got the dad looking like he was marrying, you know, my young soldier ex, um, before I even met him. Um, and then we've got chief. Bridesmaid, your poor mum. The awkward angles of her crap blue suit. I see you managed to get your Craig out of the oak. Right wing, our cater is meek, verdant and mute. Downstage left, Barbie X stands. In my place to be, she is. Why it keeps going off? Is it the signal? It. Sorry, everybody. No, I think it might be no, the signal. I don't know. Be. I think it's my crap phone. It just keeps turning off and going black. Why, why are you That's doing weird. this? No, why are you doing this phone? Uh, okay. I'll try and go back into it. Oh, we've got Barbie X. She's called Jenny. I quite like Jenny, actually. <laughs> um, down <laughs> stage left, Barbie X stands in my place to be big jugged and bright she's on her way out the great escape 
your face. Narrow as pointing peak, cap jammed on. I can't see your eyes. I don't know you yet. Your backwards family, all face forward, peg dolls. A lot of you. Thank you. Can you hear the cat meow? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's appreciation. It's. I think it's trying to clap. That's the only way it knows how. I'm just going to have to chuck it out. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> all right. No worries. So, um, Louise's new pamphlet, The Uniform Factory, it's been published by Verve Poetry Press. Uh, last week, it was published on Thursday, and you can get it direct from Louise, louisepoet.co.uk. I was yeah, just yeah. doing an ad. Got it. There you go. Um, okay, so, um, and I'll do one more piece from this, and then we can have a chat cool. if you want, and then if you want me no. to, and then I would like to do a little if we've got some more, but if you've not got your time, it's fine. Okay, cool. so the last, I talked earlier about the land days, um, so this is literally two lines, Um Apparently, it's not like really possible to do the rhyme scheme the same, the lilt, because they can be sung. Um, but yeah, this is what we've got. Land day. The drones have come to a British sky. The mouths of our rockets will sound in reply. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Very powerful. Isn't it amazing what you can do? With what you, well, what you can do in two lines. Like that's that's so powerful. Like. Yeah, but that's where it's like, I'm a bit like, I've got to be really like, um, I want people to read the article and look at the originals. Well, I said the originals, not really originals, because people have always taken them and me mix them and share them. But, you know, like, mm. I'm a bit like, it's cultural appropriation if you make money from other people's cultures. And if right. you um, don't acknowledge that, and actually part of the reason I... I included these pieces because I wanted people to find out about these young girls who were massively into poetry and they had to ring up and submit their poems anonymously on the radio and um, phone into poetry groups and not tell yeah. their husbands what they were writing because they were writing about dodgy elections and stuff. Um, <laughs> so, like, I think it like the land days like show the real humour in um, the women in Afghanistan, and I think that's like really powerful and good to know yeah that's incredible yeah fair play well I'll, I'll look forward to checking it out so that's on the poetry foundation did you say yeah go on the poetry foundation and just i'll just google land days there's like literally one article on them <laughs> oh well fair you know play I mean? that's amazing wrong, yeah wrong, it? Like, i don't know and like yeah. we've all heard of haikus haven't we and it's like oh yeah. let's haiku the hell out of things like let's have a yeah. land days as a form so that's that's one of your next projects potentially is is collaborating with some of the poets in Afghanistan to see where you can yeah. take it. Like I've been in contact with a girl this week who's um, writing amazing poetry already, and she's at uni in London. And so we're just going to see what we can um, like dream up together. You know what could be wow. good. Hint. So that's and amazing. like you know, if anyone knows any um, Pashto poets, uh, they don't have to be from Afghanistan; they can be from Pakistan, and they want to work with me on a project. Please, please get in touch because it's the it's the point where we're dreaming things, you know. So we don't know what it's going to be yet, and it, and it could take a couple of years to fully evolve. And um, because mm. I know what I want to happen, so it's just a question of making it happen. Yeah, absolutely. So do you feel like um, you've had more time to think about projects like that that are slightly longer term because of the lockdown? Or do you think that's just coincidence and it's just come out of the Uniform Factory organically, if that makes sense? Um, I think that the, the lockdown has helped me focus on what I should be doing, which is more creative stuff. And that's what most of that excites me and gives me like pleasure. Um, yeah. And also less stuff. So more good stuff less of just doing everything because I'm look I love cramming working. I love having yeah. teaching in the day and doing all sorts of stuff in the day and then doing stuff at night as well. And then before you know it, it's like all my time is spent doing poetry things and not much time like going walking or exercising or doing stuff as a family with the kids. So I've got to be careful just generally not to do that because I'm a bit workaholic. Yeah, no same. But even when when you say all your time spent doing poetry things, it's like admin meetings, yeah. emails, projects. It's not creative, is it? So like you say, it's important to, yeah. I got um, quite a few little commissions during lockdown. And at first I went for kids stuff. So I um, mostly applied for children's commission, children's work, because I just thought, 
that's the only brain space I'm going to have. You know, like some quirky rhyming poetry that's childlikeness. Yeah, yeah. Like I wrote one about a hamster that bites you. Um, so like that that's a good I'm happy with that. Like I just I do that quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. No. Okay, this is the hamster poem. To. My hamster bit my fingers, my hamster bit my toes, my hamster made my ear all bleed. I love my hamster loads. I love you, nighttime noise maker. When you're running round your wheel, I love you, daytime dozer. You're soft as dusk and dust to feel. My hamster is a scamster. My hamster is my friend. My hamster got lost running under my bed, but he came back in the end. <laughs> uh, so in my lockdown, nice. you know that kind of vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> You bite hamsters, they're horrible things. <laughs> <laughs> Never had one myself, I can't comment. Well, no, that was great, I love that. Like, it's nice to be able to explore more stuff creatively, isn't it? Definitely. Have we got time for any more stuff from the leaders? I've no idea what time it is. It'd be, it's just gone 10 to, so I reckon you could do one or two more poems if you want, but I don't want you to feel pressured, like, whatever you want to do. I'm excited because, like, you don't get out to do the performing, do you? So I like seeing no. your beautiful face, Matt, so that's nice. Um, oh, it should be, that's me cupping your face, we go, look at him, it's lovely. <laughs> um, and I got to do some poems last night at a uni for some people starting, some writers starting their MA. Oh, so yeah. Fun. like so good we were yeah. outside on the grass and everything and the weather was good i was like yay and nice. so I, i'll um i'll show you my lolita's book which came out like christmas for christmas and yeah. i've not had a chance to get send take it anywhere really i just thought maybe i'll show maybe i'll just show one poem from here which would be great it? yeah you for it and um, i think i was gonna do um Women who wank. <laughs> Let me find it. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Well, what happened was I went uh, watching a, a show by a really amazing uh, improviser called Joanne Tremarco, and she does a sh an improvised show called Women Who Wank and tours it all over the place. And I, I'm a, I'm a bit of a prude, so saying that is a bit like, oh, a bit too <laughs> cheeky for me. Um, <laughs> And she really like made me feel like I was being a bit of an idiot, feeling cheeky about saying that. Um, mm. So I wrote this poem after I went watching her show. And um, so if you get to see her show, see it because she's amazing. Uh, and it's called Privates. Um, Privates in the back room of the red tent. We watch women who W asterisk N K and each other blushing inside Ooh, you are old spells the witch bright child on stage in her dress of washed blood pushing us to say the word wank this audience won't won't talk masturbation shy <laughs> Does anyone in the audience have any teenage daughters? Why not? Fools the violet comedy clit on stage. Don't you want her to be Venus? Well, I'm sort of scared of making a show of myself. One mum says, I thought she'd find it out herself. The same way we find out that carrots are good for making us see in the dark. Quank <laughs> finishes in a climax and guilt, obviously. She's a jokester, she's a fiddler, she's a meddler, this witch on stage. And if I was a good parent, I'd to do, start, stop beating around the bush. Audition the finger puppets. Make our pussy play Mastercast uh, for the kids. Oh, 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 awkward. The witch, her head pokes through the hood of her frock. She's peeping through the laughing stock. She cartwheels, ta-da! In the bar, afterwards, she whispers, I'm the double O in fool. 
her fingers and thumbs make binoculars. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. I love the way you perform. So it's just so great. I mean, obviously, like it's great to see the books, but I just love the way you bring it to life. It's quality. Oh, thanks, Matt. I'm having loads of fun, and the beauty of performing in your own room with a lot of like attractive lighting is that um, I don't know. I find it more relaxing. I don't have the yeah. same horrible adrenaline that I have when I'm performing live. Yeah. I know what you mean. I, I, I get nervous sometimes, but more about the tech. Like if it's on Zoom, on Facebook, I'm like, oh, but it's really nice. And like, I'm so lucky to have done 16 of these, like just watching it. It's great. <laughs> I, know, it's I, saw, I saw a bit of Jasmine Gardosis earlier because she tagged me in it. And to be honest, I, I'm not on Instagram a lot. And I've not really realised that you could get it on Facebook and on YouTube. And, you know, I didn't realise our content's there. So this is just going to be so much fun to go back and watch the old ones and be like, oh, I really wanted to see him. I've never seen her and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I've been really lucky with the people who've agreed to do it, including yourself, yeah. But like, this isn't on Facebook and YouTube now, but I'd download it. Yeah. Upload, you know, like, like, I'm a bit of a group, but uh, it will be tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, buzzing. Well, look, thanks so much for agreeing to do it. I really, really appreciate you giving up the time. Um, I've always loved your work. You know I have. So I'm really, really happy that you've, you've done it. And uh, I look forward to reading it as well, The Uniform Factory. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so you've I'll got copies, haven't you? Go on. You've got copies to sell yourself. Yeah, basically. I mean, obviously you can buy them off Verb Poetry Press. I'm not trying to do them out of a deal. But, you know, these little spawners live in my front room. I've got envelopes. The beauty of if you get it from me is I normally like um, put a little, um, you know, a little recommendation in, you know, like a page number mm. for the person. Um, and if I know them, obviously it's something that I think they like. And then if I don't know them, sometimes I do a bit of social media stalk. Um, you know, I think, oh, I imagine this person might like this one. And then if <laughs> I find them, I feel like that's weird now, but that's what I've been doing. And then if I can't find them at all, then I just go random and think, I'll just share with you what I'm feeling today. Well, there you go. You can't say better than that. It's money goes straight to you and you put in a recommendation. That's cracking that. Can't beat that. So, yeah, it's louisapoet.co.uk. Is that right? Yeah, it is, yeah. And, like, I'm on socials on at louisapoet. So there's loads of links in all my socials to my website. And I've got my little shop and it's all proper and good. And last night when I went to the um, university, I had a card machine. You've got a card machine, haven't you, Matt? Yeah, it's got to be done. It's got to be done yeah. nowadays. Yeah, like, people, like, I know this sounds like it's like business talk, this, isn't it? But, like... It's quite, you feel quite um, like an entrepreneur when you've got your card machine. Start thinking what other things I could sell. No, I'm only joking, not those. No, I don't know why. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be loaded on the, on the live. No, but it's, it's very useful. But yeah, it is. And when we start doing events again, we'll all have card machines because cash just did not a thing anymore, is it? But yeah, thank you so much for performing. I think you're amazing. And every, you've had lots of love on here, like comments and love hearts. So people who are watching, please check out Louisa's new pamphlet and follow her everywhere online and yeah buzzing i'll see you soon oh, hopefully thanks. thank you for having us on and doing this you're such a little star oh you're a diamond thank you so much i'll see you soon bye friends bye, bye. so that was uh, louise fazakali who fantastic um i first saw louise perform in pudsey in Oh, spring 2015, maybe even late 2014, and she absolutely blew me away. Uh, and Louise is sort of central to how Nymphs and Fugs came to be, really. Um, uh, Cancel House Poetry was the first thing we released way back five years ago. Um, so, yeah, please check her out. Please uh, buy the Uniform Factory, and um, we'll be back next week. Uh, Madeleine Kinsella, poetry, um, Madeleine Kinsella is on next week, and she's going to be uh, with Tori Garbutt. So Tori Garbutt is hosting next week instead of me, which is going to be good fun for you. So make sure you tune in 7.30 till 8pm UK time. I've been Matt Abbott. We are Nimson Folks. Bye. Bye.